asked the question that do I suggest the Muslims to follow the principles of Mahatma Gandhi, then he changed it to any principle of Mahatma Gandhi, that is non-violence and satyagraha. Whichever... Or, or, sorry, sorry to interrupt, doctor. Or any of the principles of Mahatma yeah, I, Gandhi. I, I got a question. Starting you said the principle, meaning all the principles, then you said any principle, I'll give answer to both. All those principles of Mahatma Gandhi, which match with the Quran, which match with our Creator, match with the saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've got no objection telling the Muslims, follow it wholesale. For example, the Satyagraha movement of Mahatma Gandhi, non-violence, the Prophet did the same. Not that he copied from Mahatma Gandhi, it is Mahatma Gandhi who copied from the Prophet, which I'll come to it later on. If you see the Makki age of the Prophet, the first approximate 13 years that he spent in Makkah, he told the followers, no violence. Many non-Muslims accepted Islam. They were fierce warriors. The Prophet said, your jihad is sabr. Sabr means patience. Many Muslims were killed and butchered. The pagan Makkin that time, they targeted the weak Muslims. They tortured them. They killed them. So those who were powerful, they got angry. They said that they killed our brothers. We will take revenge. The Prophet said, your jihad is sabr. See, someone who has the power to fight back. And he fights back, it's good. But someone who has the power to fight back, and the commandment is don't fight back, and then he restrains himself, that is real jihad. Jihad in Arabic means to struggle. It means to strive. So here the Prophet's commandment was non-violence. They went on the streets only saying that we bear witness that there's no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. People stoned them, they did not retaliate. People abused them, they did not retaliate. The Prophet went to Taif, people stoned him, he didn't retaliate. So this is one of the strategies, but not the only strategy. So do you want to complete the answer? No, so sir. After, after Dr. Zakir completes your question, we'll allow you to ask. You okay, have okay. to have some patience, brother. Okay, okay, sir. You have asked a question, I have to give the reply. So this part of Mahatma Gandhi, of non-violence, depending on situation. But now if you tell the Indian government, you know the person is robbing, non-violence, don't arrest him. The person is raping, non-violence, don't arrest him. The Indian government will agree. Every country has a police force. This force is meant to let peace prevail in that country. So sometimes they use force against the criminal to let peace prevail. You can't tell the government, can't tell the police commissioner of Bombay that, see, Mahatma Gandhi said non-violence, so a person is robbing, let him rob, only do shiksha, but don't rob. Suppose they come and rape your sister, you will say, okay, don't rape, don't rape, non-violence. So non-violence is the best. In Islam, there is something like zulm. Zulm, in Arabic, the best translation of zulm can be oppression. And a person who does oppression is called as a zalim, zalim person. And who is more zalim than a person who can stop the oppression and does not stop the oppression? The Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith of Sahih Muslim that if you see an evil, you stop it with your hand. If you cannot stop it with the hand, then stop it with the tongue. If you cannot stop it with the tongue, then curse in your heart. And if you curse in your heart, you are the lowest level of Mormon, you are the lowest level of Muslim. Suppose you see a rape taking place. Mahatma Gandhi said, oh, don't rape, don't rape. The best is if you have the power to stop, stop it with your hand. She may not be your sister, she may not be your mother. If you see someone raping, if you can stop it with your hand, you stop it with your hand. If you cannot, if you are weak, if you don't have the power, at least say, oh, bhai taab, rape mat karo, baladkar mat karo. Dear brother, don't rape, at least with your tongue. If you think, if I say with my tongue also, he'll kill me, at least curse in your heart. So depending upon the situation, the strategy keeps on changing. When Prophet went to Medina, there he was peaceful. He did Sulay Hudaybiyah. He signed a contract between the pagan and believers and Muslim. They broke the contract. When they come for war, then the Almighty God said, when they come for war, don't get scared, fight. Kill them. So depending upon the situation, 
and according to the people historians Michael H Hart he wrote a book of the 100 most influential people in human history number 1 he gave to prophet Muhammad peace be upon him but i'm not mentioning him for that among the important misses was mahatma gandhi michael h hart a famous historian after mentioning the 100 most influential people in history he mentioned the important misses and in that he mentioned Mahatma Gandhi and he says the Satyagra movement of Mahatma Gandhi which was one of the important movements which let the Britishers go back but what he said even if this movement wasn't there yet India would have got independence according to the famous historian Michael H. Hart. so what we realize that depending upon the situation we have to use the strategy you can't say always non-violence sometimes violence will have to be used to let peace prevail like how you have police in every country in every state so anyone who goes beyond the limits who rapes who robs who harms other people that time as a last resort like the country says the police can use force similarly islam says as a last resort as a last alternative sometimes force can be used to let peace prevail. Hope that answers the question.